Yeah. All right, I'm with Patrick. I was saying you, you seem to be in the best shape, but, you know, you're saying Jim broke the world record, so. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, kind of hard to compete with the world record right. and the world champion in terms of the best day, but I feel like in relative terms, I had a great day. I had a two-minute PR, um, and my PR was on a much cooler day, so I feel great about it. Yeah, like I, you're perfect. I just feel like it's way too hot to get a world record. I mean, like Jim did got the 50, but how was the heat for you? The heat was good for me. I live in Savannah, Georgia, so it's already 90, with 60 or 70 percent humidity. So this was quite cool, but at the same time, there was some exposed portions of the course that I was using a lot of ice to just thermoregulate regulate and stay on top of cooling. And yeah, the pacing you went pretty much according to plan until the very end, or how was that? Yeah, I would say until 15 miles ago, my pacing was really good. I was kind of char charging for 505 for 50 miles. I came through 50 miles in like 508, um, and then the last three laps were a real suffer fest for me. So I, I don't think I ever went slower than maybe 645 pace in the last three laps on the course, but the last 15 miles definitely got me down in the, the dregs of. And do you, you got a GPS watch on or like, are there mile splits? What's out there? How often do you get splits out there? I don't use splits at all. I use average time for the entire run. So like my watch will keep one split for the whole run and I'll basically just monitor what is my average. Cause I don't like to focus so much on Oh, I just ran a 6.16, I should be running 6.07s. But if my average on the watch for the whole run says 6.05s, I know I'm doing my job. Because there, there'll be regulate. Does it, does it show, is it showing you the actual pace and the average, or it only shows you the average? It only shows me the average. I never look at actual pace. Like if I train, I only look at heart rate, total time, and average pace. Um, and then if I'm in a race, I only look at average pace and total time. What it is, it's yeah. a better way to do it. Well, it's a little less stressful. I mean, ultra, like, you just you're out there so much longer. Like, when I used to run a marathon, I would freak out every mile instead of, yeah. oh, it could have been hillier, I could have felt bad. Like, the average, yeah, if it starts slipping, you know you're slowing down, but what else do you, you gotta keep going? Absolutely, yeah. And, and when you're out there for maybe six and a half hours, it becomes extremely stressful. If you took a piss break and then you had a seven minute mile, it can be quite psychological. But if you went from 606 a mile average to 607, it's not nearly as stressful. And you like the roads? Is that your um, I'm running Western States this summer. Like I run 200 mile races on the trail. I've run a 24 hour race on the track, but I, I like a mixture of road and trail, primarily 100K to 100 mile distance. A lot of people. So Western States is next? Yeah, Western States is next. How do you recover for this? From this? I've got eight weeks and I've done, I've already done a lot of Western States training in terms of a lot of elevation gain. Um, my coach is Magda Boulay and um, we've just been working on uh, in the winter doing a lot of specific preparation for Western States and then we had a nice six block uh, training cycle for this race and now we'll recover for six days or so and, and go back to Western States training. In Georgia, how do you how do you prepare for this? A lot of treadmill and a lot of weight vest, with strength training with a weight vest. So I do a lot of work. Like Wait, explain that. Yeah, so I'll do like twenty. Treadmill with weight vest or weight? Wait, I'm so confused. Sometimes treadmill with a weight vest. I'll do like four mile per hour hikes on fifteen percent grades with a twenty pound weight vest. Um, and then I'll do like 20 minute uphill intervals on a 15% grade at like six to seven miles per hour. And then I'll do quite a bit of work like on single track flatter trails in my area. Um, and sometimes I travel outside of my region to like Chattanooga or Asheville and get some hillier training. So you're running down and up mountains essentially? I mean, this is, okay, I've never when seen- When I get trained with this guy- I've never seen Western Asheville. States. Explain like what the course is like. To someone who's never seen it. Like, yeah. we feel like we understand it, but like what's, I don't know. Yeah, so you start at 6,500 feet at ele of elevation, or 6,000 feet of elevation in Squaw Valley. You go up to 8,700 feet in the first four miles. So you climb 2,400 feet in the first four miles oh up a ski hill. And there'll be, this year, there'll be probably snow for the first 30 miles. So once you get to the top of escarpment, it's all single track trail to Forest Hill, which is mile 60. From the top of escarpment to like Forest Hill, you descend a lot of elevation. Like the whole race has 23,000 feet of elevation descent and 18,000 feet of elevation gain over the course of the entire event. So you, it, it's often called a fire and ice race where you'll start in the snow some years and then the canyons will get up to 115 degrees and then you'll, it'll be really hot for the rest of the day. <laughs> so 
Yeah, like Jim was saying, it might be a sloppy year. That means there's just snow on the ground. It could be a real sloppy year. Like this, the snowfall this year has been like pretty similar to 2017, when there was like 20 inches of snow on the ground at the start. And you're running through it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's so, your goal for Western States? I'd love to be top 10 and get invited back next year. Uh, and it's my first one, so my goal with the 100 mile race, my first goal is always to finish, you know? Like, you never know when you're out there for that long what kind of day you're gonna have. But yeah, my my larger overarching goal is top 10. All right, good luck. Thanks so much. Yeah, nice talking.